Hey, poker people! Today's Q&A episode 167 is about three ways to improve playing online, poker definitions, and the PFR stat. I hope you caught episode 166 last week, where I discussed the off-the-felt mindset techniques that I use to get the most from study time. It's poker study time, y'all. Thank you so much for listening, for subscribing, for leaving those reviews and telling your friends. This podcast journey that I'm on, it's only successful thanks to each and every one of you. And for anybody new to the show, welcome to the party. And speaking of party, I want to raise a toast to my newest Patreon supporter. His name is John Gray. Thank you so much for joining the Patreon party, John. And of course, a toast to all my continuing supporters. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. Your Patreon support shows me that you enjoy the show and that you want it to never stop, never stop in. To start your own support of the show, go to patreon.com. That's P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com slash smart poker study. There are different levels of support with different rewards attached. And December is right around the corner, which means new rewards are coming your way very soon. Once you begin your support on Patreon, you'll get the current month's reward, as well as access to the archive of patron-only content. For just a few dollars a month, less than one buy-in for many of you, you'll support the show and receive some valuable poker content in return. So visit www.patreon.com slash smartpokerstudy to start that support. Well, now, we have four great questions from Michael, Garrett, and two from Charles today. Please visit the show notes page for everything I discuss, along with screenshots and links at www.smartpokerstudy.com slash pod 167. Alrighty then, gambate! This is damn exciting stuff. So the first question today comes to us from Michael, and it's about three ways to improve skills. Uh, This is what Michael said. Loved the latest podcast. The reason for this email is to ask for your help. As you can see from the graph, I am a losing player. And the thing is, I want to know why. I want to become the best player I can be and I need some guidance. For instance, I want to know if I should play tighter ranges, what skills can I work on, and also why, for instance, Phil Ivey can play a wider range than most players and how I can develop these skills while winning. Thanks, Michael. Alrighty, thank you so much for that email, Michael, and for sharing me uh, or sharing with all of us that dilemma of yours. Uh, You've got a lot to work on here for sure. You're kind of all over the place in what you want to develop. Um, If I can boil everything down, everything that you had just said into one question, it would be this. How do I improve my poker skills when there are so many areas I need to work on? And it is hard figuring this out. Being unsure of what to study causes procrastination. It causes avoidance and inaction. All of these lead to a stagnation in your skills, so you remain at the same level indefinitely. I don't want you to be paralyzed by not knowing where to begin, so I've got three recommendations to help you narrow down your path of studies. But before that, real quick, I want you to commit to studying one theme per week for at least two hours. Don't hopscotch between three bets today, C bets tomorrow, early position opening ranges the next day, and outs and odds the following day. One theme per week, study and practice with that theme in mind, then move on to the next when you feel confident in your newly acquired skills and knowledge. So here are the three different ways that I think you can uh, go about planning your studies, Michael. Number one is follow the MED series, Minimum Effective Dose. You should start with episode 87 to understand what the MEDs are all about. Then start with the first pre-flop range episode, number 90. You must spend at least one full week on each episode. Study the content, work on it off the felt, and practice what you're learning on the felt. Just listening to a podcast isn't enough, as that will only lead to, like my estimate is 10% of the information soaking into that noggin of yours. The second recommendation of mine is listen to my leak finding series of podcasts, which start on episode 18. After that, you'll want to listen to episodes 25, 26, 38, 42, 47, and ultimately episode 49. And as you listen to each of those, take one full week to fix whatever leak it is that I'm addressing in that episode. Even if it's not a leak of yours, you'll learn more about it and be able to exploit this leak in other people. And my third recommendation, Michael, is to commit to one handwriting exercise every day for 66 days. 
I did this for myself, so I know this is a big commitment. You can check out my 66 Days of Hand Reading series on YouTube. Uh, you mentioned how Phil Ivey can play what seems to be any two cards preflop. He can do this because he's an expert post-flop player and an expert at analyzing and exploiting weaknesses. Hand reading is what's going to help improve your own skills in these areas. So thanks again for that email, Michael, and good luck to you, partner. Question two to us today comes from Garrett, and it's about playing online and learning from online hand histories. So this is what Garrett says. Number one, I notice you live in California. How can you play poker online? Do you have a quote unquote how to reference? And part two, I have two sites I play on that are play money. APT is a training site. PokerStars is the play money. On both of these sites, I can run a tool like Poker Tracker 4. Do you think that I could play these sites, obtain the hand histories, and use them in my own 66 days of hand reading? Regards, Garrett. All right, thank you very much for these two questions, Garrett. I don't have a how-to for playing online poker in the United States, but all you have to do is visit one of the one of the sites that are available to us, download the software, and sign up. Let me give you three different sites that I know that you can play on. Now, this isn't a complete list. These are just the three that I've either played on or I know a lot of people who play on. The first two I play on, the last one, it's very popular with a lot of people I know. So the first site is America's Card Room, and I do have an affiliate for this, and if you sign up, I would love it if you signed up with my affiliate. Go to smartpokerstudy.com slash ACR. Make sure to use offer code SPSPOD, and by doing that, you'll get 27% rake back. Uh, if you play here and you use the link and the code, it just ends up supporting the show. They have tons of cash games and a Man, whole, so many tournaments available all the time. It's a really great site to play on. And, uh, you know, the tournament and the cash game buy-ins range anywhere from tiny little $2 games, you know, one-cent, two-cent games. They have $1 tournaments, $1 sit-and-goes, um, all the way up to whatever level you want. And a great thing about America's Card Room is that you can use Poker Tracker 4 there to record the hands and use that as your database to learn uh, in your study sessions. The second site that I play on is Carbon, and I do play here quite a bit, but I don't have an affiliate. You could just go to www.carbongaming.ag slash poker. When you go there, download the software, sign up. Uh, Carbon doesn't have nearly the amount of traffic that ACR does, but it's a good site to play on with plenty of fish. There are some regs there, too, that you'll have to contend with, like me. But, um, you know, overall, it's a great site. They've got sit and goes, they've got the tournaments, they've got the cash games, all different buy-ins and everything. It's just not as heavily trafficked as ACR. And the last one I'd recommend is Ignition. It used to be called Bovada. Now, I've never played here, but I've known many players that do. Uh, anonymous tables are what they have, so you don't have player names uh, or screen names or avatar names, whatever you want to call it. You have numbers that change on every table, not player names. So on one table, you might be number 345. On another table, you might be number 22. On another table, you might be 89743. I don't know the number of digits, but you know what I mean. Every table, you have a different player name. Um, the thing with this is you can't develop an extensive history with any one player, but if you sit at a table long enough and you play 50, 75, 100 hands with them, the stats on that one player will start to accumulate. So you can get a good understanding of what type of player they are. Uh, this will also save or they don't allow Poker Tracker 4, but there are other software available for HUDs and recording hand histories. So if you get one of those, it'll save your hands, and then you could just research hands. You can't dive into any one particular player, but you can look at different showdown hands or hands where there was crazy action street by street uh, to go through. And even though you don't know the player's name, you can at least get a possible sense of what type of player they are based on the stats you've accumulated with them up to that point and then just research the hands and see if you just can't learn from the various hands you play there so those were the three i recommend america's card room carbon and ignition oh for ignition just go to www.ignitioncasino.eu slash poker and of course i'll have these links on the show notes page for you as well so you said you play on free sites, and you can use those hands as practice. Because assigning ranges pre-flop, then narrowing them through the streets works the same way. Doesn't matter. Any hand dealt, you can practice hand reading. They will be calling with many weak draws, and betting and raising with many of those same draws, and just marginal weak hands, uh, because of the free money aspect. They'll also be calling down with third pair and fourth pair, because they just won't believe you. You know, They'll say something like, I put them on ace-king, and they'll be calling you down with fourth pair 
there the whole way because you have ace king. So it does make it harder to hand reading, but you can at least practice the skills and get used to it um, with your free play database before you get to the to the actual you know cash game database. Uh, if you try out any of the three sites that I mentioned, they all have games as low as one cent, two cents, if money is a concern for you. Anything on the line is better than free play. I recommend playing at 10 NL or higher if you want to practice hand reading. Today's podcast is brought to you by Audible. Get your free audiobook download and your free 30-day trial at audibletrial.com slash smartpokerstudy. Over 180,000 titles to choose from for your iPhone, Android, Kindle, or your MP3 player, including both of my books, How to Study Poker Volumes 1 and and Volume 2. And if you're looking for something outside of poker, um, when we went to see Justice League this past week, they had a preview playing for um, Ready Player One. And I read that book. I'm looking forward to the movie. And the Ready Player One audiobook is super killer. Will Wheaton narrates it, and he does an exceptional job. I'm going to listen to it again probably sometime in December before the movie comes out next March. Um, Yeah, so I highly recommend Ready Player One as a great audiobook for you. And I've got just a few shout outs for you today. Jarrett Demain purchased uh, Poker Tracker 4. And, you know, we could call him Jarrett Deman. I'm sure he's heard that a million times in his life. What a terrible one. I shouldn't have said that. I should have just said Jarrett Deman. Well, Jarrett, thank you very much for purchasing Poker Tracker 4 through my affiliate. Good luck out there um, taking advantage of your opponents, using the database to go through your hands and learning from them. Also, regarding Poker Tracker 4, Stuart Roberts purchased the Smart HUD from me. He is using that to majorly exploit his opponents. Um, over just 50 hands, you can start to get a sense of what type of player they are just with that HUD right there. So good luck to you, Stuart. And also, another anonymous player decided to purchase the Expert Hand Reading webinar from me. Thank you very much for making that purchase, uh, Mr. or Mrs., or should I say Senior or Senorita Anonymous. Good luck out there hand reading. Get that practice in. Um, Just do it over and over every single day, one hand per day. 66 days, I recommend. I know that's a big commitment, but go ahead, learn from that webinar, do the hand reading practice, and then use it on the felt. And finally, Tim Zajac left a really good review for How to Study Poker Volume 2. Here's what he said. Poker is mainly an individualistic endeavor that requires a lot of responsibility in order to exceed in the game. Most books talk about theory and application and may even include a quiz at the end of each section, but rarely do they approach the idea on how to effectively study while providing a clear example on how to implement such tactics. Sky has taken a lacking field in the poker community and has created, in my opinion, a needed body of literature to help poker players across the spectrum spectrum of mastery. Volume 2 adds tools to the toolbox created from Volume 1 and then begins to construct what a month's worth of study would look like with the implementation of these tools. It's easy to understand theoretically what these tools can be used for, but to actually implement them and knowing how is a completely new challenge. Volume 2 takes this challenge and gives you a real tutorial on how to implement the various techniques discussed. Thank you so much for that review, Tim. I really do appreciate it. Everybody else, if you have a review for the book, after you've made the purchase, please give an honest review. Um, Just, you know, find it on Amazon and leave a review. Thank you much. Alrighty, back to class, poker people. So questions three and four today both come to us from Charles. You might remember him. Last week, he asked the question about my color coding ranges. Well, this is what Charles said this week. I would like to ask you to give consideration for your next Q&A to present the PFR stat percentage ranges and player types the same way you covered VPIP. Uh, All right. Thank you for this uh, follow-up request, Charles. I do appreciate it. So let's talk PFR. This, of course, stands for pre-flop raise, and it's the percentage of the time that a player makes any raise pre-flop, 2-bet, 3-bet, 4-bet, and beyond. So if this is at 10%, that means that this player only raises 1 out of every 10 hands dealt to them. We can equate this percentage to a range of hands. Can you tell me right now what hands make up a 10% range? Go ahead and come up with your answer. I'll give you a little time.
Alrighty, time's up. So let's see what your answer or how your answer compares to mine. I would say a 10% range is pocket fours and above, king queen suited, and ace 10 or better. The range that you came up with might have differed a bit from that, but as long as the 10% contains about 130 hands, you're on the right track. And you might have included king-queen offsuit in yours and maybe taken away fours and fives, for example. Or you could have added the deuces and threes added in and taken away ace-10 offsuit. One of the great things about PFR is that it's a super quick and reliable indicator of an opponent's aggression because it accumulates with every hand dealt. Other than getting a walk in the big blind, Every hand dealt to you, you have the choice preflop to fold, call, or raise. Whatever your choice, it shows in your preflop raise and your VPIP numbers, which we discussed last week. So let's talk about what different preflop raise numbers mean through my own color coding system. I follow the same red, yellow, green light scheme that I used last week. So once again, the color red refers to tight ranges, green is wide ranges, and yellow is middle of the road ranges. So for PFR, anywhere from 0% to 8% is color-coded red. 8 to 18% is yellow, and 18% to 24% is green. And then beyond that, I use the color orange to denote just super aggressive play. So 24% all the way up through 100 is the, uh, the color orange. And 0 to 8 is in red, because when somebody comes in for a raise with a red stat, I need to stop and think before I proceed. It's a tight range, full of strong hands, so they're less likely to fold to a 3-bet. And if I call with weak aces or weak pairs, I'm often going to be dominated. I color code 8 through 18 yellow, because this is where people start widening their ranges a bit. This is getting into the tight aggressive and reg, uh, reg style of play. Some caution is required when PFR is yellow, because it means that they likely know what they're doing and they have a good mixture of strong, medium strength, and speculative hands in their range. If we look at 15%, for example, this might include every pocket pair, ace-10 or better, ace-5 suited through ace-deuce suited, king-jack suited, and 8-7 suited or better. This range has very good board coverage and it can crack very big hands. There are plenty of hands within this range that they can 4-bet with and plenty of hands that they can call the 3-bet with. If this player is in position on me, then I've got to think twice about fighting from out of position with a wide range. That doesn't mean I can't fight back, I just have to give it some critical thought before I click the button. Green colored stats indicate wider ranges. At 18-24%, to 24%, they now include some pretty weak hands. If we look at a 24% range, for example, it now has hands like 9-7 suited through jack-9 suited, 5-4 suited, 6-5 suited, jack-10 offsuit, queen-10 offsuit, and king-10 offsuit, as well as maybe like ace-9 or even ace-8 offsuit. Lots of these hands are folding to a 3-bet, or if they decide to call, they're big dogs to my stronger 3-betting range. So green means go, and I'm more likely to go for some aggressive plays or calls versus green PFR percentages. That final color is orange, and that's for PFR over 24%. And you can imagine, the higher you go over 24%, the more weaker hands and straight, straight up bluffs are in their range. If I see PFR in orange, that means they have an extremely wide and very unprofitable range. I can choose to 3-bet them wide for value and as bluffs, or I can call with very wide ranges, especially when I'm in position. Alrighty, so that was Charles' first question. The second question of Charles, the fourth question today, is about poker definitions. Now, this was a request that Charles made. Charles says, Would you please consider developing a podcast that lists all of your abbreviations that you use in all your poker materials? It would be a helpful point of reference, especially for new students and potential students. I know it would be a low priority thing, but still would be helpful. Thank you, Charles. Alrighty, that is a great idea, Charles. And I actually took you up on it. As soon as I saw this email come in from you, I decided, because it's something I thought about a long time, or for a long time now, um, I decided, hey, screw it, just create the page. So everybody right now, I'm currently looking at the page. You can go to it. It's www.smartpokerstudy.com slash definitions. Now, Charles, you asked for just abbreviations, but really that's not good enough. I don't want just SB equals small blind. I don't want stuff like that. I decided to go further and make this page a definitions and more page. For everyone listening, um, please go there right now if you're at your computer, um, or even if you're listening on your smartphone, pull it up on the smartphone. So let's take a look at it. The page is organized by alphabetical categories. So actions is first, 
bet sizing next, hands after that, uh, and, you know, and so on down the page. Within each category, the terms are alphabetized. So under actions, you'll see 2-bet, then 3-bet, then call, then continuation bet, and so on. Continuation bet also has the abbreviation C-bet right there next to it, as well as the definition following that part. But I also have some C-bet examples right there as well. This is the more part of the definitions and more name of the page. My goal is to give small strategy insights along with the definitions. I have put just a few terms on it so far, and I would estimate that the page might be 10% completed, maybe even only 5%, um, even though it has 21 terms on it right now. I'd like to ask all of you to help me with this page. All you've got to do is visit the page. Look at the current terms there and add any in the comments that you feel are missing. Maybe you see the term continuation bet, and that reminds you of donk bets and float bets and check calling. Whatever you think of that isn't there, just enter it in the comments. I see these comments every day, so as time goes on, I'll be adding more terms and definitions uh, and information all the time to this page. So it will become a super valuable page, which I'll just continuously update over time as more new poker people discover it. Challenge! Here's my challenge to you for this episode. If you aren't already playing online poker for real money, get to it. Nothing beats online real money games for developing your skills and practicing with purpose. You want to work on three bets? You can make all you want at 5NL and it doesn't cost you that much money. Want to defend more versus C bets? Go ahead and do it also at 5NL. The skills you practice and develop online will easily translate to the live realm. Now it's your turn to take action and do something positive for your poker game. Now get it on. This episode isn't complete until you head to the show notes page at www.smartpokerstudy.com slash pod 167. When you go there, you'll see screenshots and links to everything discussed today, and you'll discover ways in which you can support the podcast and keep me keeping on. Thank you so much for listening today. And great news! I created an Alexa skill. It's a very simple flash briefing skill that allows you to play the latest podcast episode right there. No download required. Just search for Smart Poker Study in the Amazon Alexa store. Enable the skill and move it to the top of your flash briefing queue. After you test it out, please leave a five-star review. If you can type or say the words Smart Poker Study, you can find me on Twitch, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and like I just mentioned, a skill for your Amazon Echo. Or send me an email, please, sky at smartpokerstudy.com. And just a quick side note, I was on the Just Hands Poker Podcast, episode number 102. I had a great time with Jack and Zach, and I discussed a super lucky live hand that I played. Check it out at justhandspoker.com slash blog slash episode 102. Alrighty, poker people. Next week in episode 168, I will resume the poker mindset MED as I discuss some self-improvement ideas for your life, which will also help your poker game. Word of mouth is the best advertising, so thank you very much for sharing the show with other poker people. Your sharing and caring is what helps us grow. Until next time, study smart, play much, and make your next session the best one yet. I want to last help, I want the world to